everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith, and this video will kick off a Rolling Solo showcase for Role Player Adventures. Now, you're looking at three books here on the table. Really excited to dive into this game first off, and the one thing I need to mention right out of the gates is this game was on my top most anticipated list for 2021, and I'm really glad this thing was able to land within this year. Very excited to show you guys. Now, recently, of course, I've done an unboxing of the base game itself but excited in this video to show you how to get this game to the table in terms of setting up not only the base game but also adding into the fray the expansion that came out along with this in the kickstarter so if you have the expansion i will walk you through the steps in getting that set up in amongst everything else and i highly recommend if you do have the expansion to add it in from the very very beginning so the rule book as well as the encounter book you can expect to find inside of the base game and the backstory codex comes from the expansion now we're going to put our focus on the rule book to start things off when you're doing setup for role player adventures the first thing you're going to want to do is flip to page five where it brings in the campaign setup we're going to go through all of those steps inside the rule book in the center here then we're going to dive into this backstory codex in order to add a few more steps of setup and of course if you don't have the expansion you can then skip past those points in this video and then we head back into the rule book where we go for the adventure setup the very first step of setup is very easy. Find the 36 attribute dice and place them in the black drawstring bag. Leave the familiar dice, and you'll notice that the familiar dice are very different in terms of the way they look. You want to leave those in the game box. So these are the only dice that should be in this bag. Step number two is to prepare the party journal. I've gone ahead and taken one of the sheets off of the pad here, and you're going to take this blank party journal, and you're going to consult the chart, which is on page five, which I will show you in a moment to find the values for the combat dice limit, the play limit, and bonus play limit based on the number of players. You'll record these values in the corresponding blanks on the party journal. Here's a look at the chart that you'll find on page five of the rulebook, as I mentioned earlier. And because I'm playing true solo, I'm gonna be using row number one there for player count one, which means my play limit is four, bonus play limit is one, and combat dice limit is three. Step number three is about taking a character sheet for each player. So I've gone ahead and grabbed that sheet, which is up top. So I'll take that blank character sheet. I'm going to slide it into the top of this character insert for my player board. And all the colored bars should show through. Lastly, each player is going to record their own name inside of the player space. Step number four is all around selecting your pre-generated characters from Role Player Adventures. And there's a whole bunch of them, as you can see here. Now, on one side, you have the portrait. On the opposite side, you have all the details surrounding that character. They're going to help to populate out your character sheet. Now, it's worth mentioning here that a number of you may have played Role Player or own it or have characters from that role playing experience from before. You might want to import those characters into Role Player Adventures, and you can. So at this very step of the setup step number four there is a fork in the road you can either choose one of these pre-generated ones so inside the box not having owned or even played or have any characters from role player but if you do have one you want to use then you're going to want to skip past all the rest of the steps of setup i'm going to go through in this campaign setup and you're going to jump straight to page six of the rule book around importing characters now i'm not going to get into the specifics around that because we're going to use a pre-generated character from role player adventures for this to show you that you can just run with the base game of role player adventures you don't need that prior stuff but if you are one of those individuals that love role player and have characters you probably do want to import this so what i'll do is instead of talking through all that i'll show you a quick glimpse inside the role player adventures rule book around how importing of characters works here is a step-by-step -step in terms of how that can be accomplished. This may help you decide whether or not you want to pick up the original game of role player in order to kind of be able to create and build your own character there and then transport them into the world of role player adventures. Or if you're just somebody who already has characters from that game because you've already consumed and enjoyed it, well, this really is something for you because you're gonna be able to bring that character you love so much into this experience. But for for now, we'll skip past all this and get back to picking a pre-generated character. 
The character I've selected is called Ivory Veritas and looks very, very cool. I'm quite happy with this. I literally just kind of shuffled the deck together and pulled one at random. This is the one I got, a very intriguing and interesting looking character for sure. So we're gonna run with this one. Step number five is all around recording your character details. So each player is gonna record their character's name, their race, and their class as indicated by their portrait card, which I've gone ahead and flipped over now, in the corresponding spaces on their character. Character sheet. Ivory Veritas is my character's name. He is a construct as a race, and his class is Enchanter Blue. Also, it states inside the rulebook in step number five to place 16 for the starting health. At this point, all of the attribute scores have been recorded, and next we move to step eight, which is around filling the attribute rows, those colored rows beside each of the attribute scores that we just placed in. And we're gonna use stamina cubes to do this, which are the translucent, clear, see-through cubes that come inside the box. And you're gonna place a number of those in each of the rows, each of the colored rows, equal to the actual attribute scores in that row. Step number nine is all around finding your class card so each player finds the class card that matches the class of their character and places it face up in the class ability space on their character board which is in the bottom left. My class ability Enchanter says I'm an opportunist, return a die from the die pool to the bag, increase another die in the dice pool by the value of the returned die. And just above it, seeing as we didn't touch on this just yet, at the very bottom of the portrait on the back side of it, it says damaged for my character. It says you feel as if years of your life were taken from you and replaced with false memories. You want nothing more than to repair your broken past and find the one responsible. Step number 10, we're going to talk about building out our starting hand. So every player reviews the back of their portrait card to see which cards are required for their starting hand, then gathers the listed cards from the various market decks, whether it be armor, weapons, skills, traits, and scrolls. Each player places the starting hand of cards face down in the hand space on their character sheet. Now, just before I go ahead and combine all these cards for my hand and place it down below in the hand slot in the bottom left, I wanted to show them all face up so you guys could see exactly what comprises my pre-made or pre-generated character. I have a spell book over here, a wand, mystic robes, manipulate, resolute, weak, and enchant. The final step of campaign setup is step number 11, where we take our starting gold. Now there is a chart inside the rule book. You'll consult this chart in order to take the amount of starting gold based on the number of players, placing a number of gold coins equal to the amount in the corresponding space on the party journal. So when you're playing with just one player, it'll be seven gold, two is five, three is three, and four is two gold. And just like that, I've gone ahead and placed seven gold in the gold box designated area on the campaign log, and that's going to do it for the campaign setup. Now, if you do not have the expansion for role player adventures, at this point you're done the campaign setup. You're going to move to page seven for the adventure setup. However, I do have the expansion, and as I mentioned earlier in the video, I am going to incorporate it right from the get go. So we are going to now move instead of going to the adventure setup. The rulebook, we're going to move out of the rulebook and into the backstory codex that comes in that expansion. Dive into the backstory codex and head just past the table of contents into the very first section of the book, and you'll see wording around how to incorporate this within the game. Let's go through those steps right now. On page four inside the codex, the expansion booklet, it states the first step is to give each player a backstory board, which we have here on the left, and a backstory insert, which is gonna slide into it. Step number two is for each player to record the name of their character's backstory in the top space above the line on their backstory board. Now, if you have a pre-generated character like I did, we flip that over to the opposite side, and you'll remember I read it out, damaged was the backstory keyword that we need to place inside of this board here. Now, if you have a character coming from role player that you're importing in, you're gonna find the backstory name at the top of the backstory card inside of role player. 
Step number three is for each player to take the backstory marker and the alignment marker in their class color. My class color is blue, and again, it's specified right next to your class, especially on the pre-generated characters. Step four, each player places their alignment marker in one of the alignment spaces at the bottom of their backstory board. If you're playing with a pre-generated character like I am, you're placing the alignment marker in the center space, which is true neutral. If you're playing with an imported character, place the alignment marker in the same space as the final position of the alignment marker from role player. Next, search through the codex and find the backstory that you have for your character. This case for me is damaged and it states here you feel as if years of your life were taken from you and replaced with false memories. You want nothing more than to repair your broken past and find the one responsible. This was also found on the back of the pre-generated card as well. It states a few years ago the day you decided to join the King's Guard. You can recall the faces of your friends and family, but not their names. Stranger still, the village you remember growing up in does not seem to exist. No one has ever heard of it, and it doesn't appear on any map. There is only one clue to your real identity, a poem inscribed onto your left arm. It reads like the clues to a puzzle. Steam of bog, firm of root, in prison, scratches reveal the truth. A treeless square found when lost, the eastern shore can now be crossed. Written in a language you instinctively understand, to all others the words look like random markings, though you can read it and the poem's meaning is not clear to you. You are convinced, however, that it holds the answer to the truth of your past. A beggar stops in the street in front of you. She removes her hood to reveal a strange serpentine face. Your quest for self-discovery will not be without witnesses, she warns. In the end, you will submit to my judgment. And with that, she chuckles and disappears into the crowd. At the very bottom here, there's a number of things we have to be aware of. It states here, the damaged player, you're going to decrease your health by two. So our overall health is going to go down by two. Our damaged player is going to increase our constitution attribute score by one and add one stamina to your contribution attribute row from the supply. So it's a nice boost to the contribution and a little bit of a hit on the health. And then it states the damaged player will record these adventure numbers and location letters on your backstory board. Just like that, we are now done with the expansion codex for backstory, at least as it relates to the campaign. We'll be coming back to it when we get to the adventure side of the setup. But as of right now, everything is set. One thing to mention here, very important, make sure you put everything in pencil. I started doing things in pen at the beginning of this video and quickly transferred over to pencil for everything because things are going to change, of course. And one of those changes that were made was in the backstory you'll see that our health was at 16 initially, has been knocked down by 2 to 14. Our constitution was 1, it now is 2, and there's an extra stamina cube in there that wasn't there before. Now, something to mention that to me is very, very creepy, and I don't even know what the odds of this really are, but I selected this pre-generated character from the beginning. I didn't actually expect when I dove into the expansion content here to set it up that I'd actually have the character they're using in the example. So that just lines up even better. Now, if you thought the addition of the backstory was really, really cool in terms of the setup and what it's adding and changing with your character as you've set up for the campaign, then you might be intrigued by this entry here inside of the backstory codex, which states right after the campaign setup, there is the ability when playing one to two player to do a dual backstory. Now, for the purposes of this setup and going through a playthrough, I'm not going to go through with this, but I wanted to show you this because I find it another level of depth around this whole backstory. So to sum up what we've done so far, we went into the rule book, we checked out the campaign setup, we followed all those instructions, we went to the expansion, we found the campaign setup in there, went through those instructions. Now we're heading back to the main rule book where we're gonna move through the adventure setup, which will take us through a number of steps to get the adventure going. And then we're gonna head back into the expansion to finish off some adventure setup steps relating to the backstory pieces. The first step of the adventure setup is to prepare the party journal. We have the journal in place. We already have some gold on it, for instance. At this point, we're going to place the rest token face up in the rest token space. 
With that situated, step number two is creating the supply. We're gonna place the dice bag, skill book, enemy deck, modifier deck, gold, XP, stamina, encounter tokens, bonus play tokens, favor markers, round markers, market decks, familiar decks, and party marker near the party journal. Step number three is around the discovery cards, title cards, and rare cards. And you're gonna place all of these face down near the party journal. Although in my case here, I've got them all inside of the dividers all organized thanks to the amazing organization that comes inside of the Kickstarter one that I have here. So the one thing you're going to notice is on the front of those discovery title and rare decks and even the expansion rare deck in the very back there they all have that red stop card at the very front because you're not supposed to shuffle these cards in any way shape or form or to reveal them unless the game instructs you to do so. Step number four focuses on the player aids. You're certainly going to want to keep this next to you when you start learning how to play role player adventures. This shows the skill check on one side and the flow of combat on the other. Step number five is all around storybooks. You're gonna find the storybook that you're moving into based on the campaign track and where you're currently at. So for me right now, starting from scratch here, adventure number one, Battle at Black Lake. I've got the storybook here in front of me. And of course, because I'm playing true solo, all the books are gonna to come to me, including the Tome of Encounters inside of this step in the rule book it depicts how these things are handled with multiple players. So inside the expansion codex on page five is the tail end of the adventure setup that you need to check for a few things after each of the adventures you're gonna run through. The very first thing is, is that each player is gonna review their backstory board. And if it shows a backstory encounter in a current adventure, then you're gonna place your backstory marker, which mine is the blue book token there on the indicated map position. Now, if you take a look at my backstory board, you'll see adventure four, four, five, seven, and eight are depicted, and we're currently in Adventure or Storybook One, which is Battle at the Black Lake. So I have nothing here to worry about in terms of placing my book token on a map at this point, but as I traverse through the stories, I will eventually need to keep an eye open for that. We can also skip past step number two. I've already talked about it essentially, which is basically the second that you're able to place the token inside of an adventure, you're gonna go ahead and do so. For us, it's not gonna be until Adventure 4E. Once that becomes revealed, we then have to make sure to place our token. We already kind of know this, it's almost self-explanatory. Third point that you need to know around this is that if this is not the party's first adventure, you are going to erase the mark on the alignment space made at the end of the previous adventure and place the player's alignment marker on it. If this is the party's first adventure, you're of course skipping this step and it's talking about this alignment cube down here. So of course, as you traverse through the world, make different choices, things unfold a certain way, your alignment is gonna change adventure after adventure. You're gonna have markings that are gonna be inside of this area. They're gonna denote where this cube is gonna to lean towards. They're gonna to be good, evil. Are you gonna be lawful or chaotic or some kind of a blend between them? So that's basically what's going to be updated in between each of the adventures. Moving right along, there's two more decks of cards I've now placed on the table, the enemy deck and the modifier deck. You'll see them in the top left-hand corner there. They were in another tray, but rather than bring the whole tray over and there's nothing else inside of it currently, I'm just gonna place the decks like so. Now we're going to touch back on the storybook that I showed you just moments ago, but we're actually gonna dive into it now because we're done with the rule book and we're done with the codex, but now we move to the adventure we've chosen, which is Battle at Black Lake. We're gonna open this up in the very first page or two. It's gonna give us a number of steps we need to do to set up for our adventure. You'll need to place the Battle at Black Lake adventure map in the center of the table. Next, you're going to place one XP on each lettered location of the adventure map. So A, B, C, and D will have one. Next, we're going to place bonus play tokens on the party journal equal to the recorded value. You'll see the limit there of one inside the bonus play area. So we're going to place one bonus token there. Next, let's move to the character sheets. 
Three things the adventure tells you to do here around the character sheets is to place each player's hand of cards on their hand space. I've done that already. Place each player's class card face up on their class ability space, which is also done. And fill each attribute row to its maximum with stamina from the supply, which we've already concluded as well. So now we can move to the encounter tokens and the final steps. There are 10 encounter tokens inside the game, but for this adventure, you only need two of them. Make sure to grab one and two. They'll be on the backs of the tokens. You're going to flip these over once you have them, randomize them so you have no idea which one's which, and you're going to place one in each of the slots on the map itself. And just like that, the encounter tokens have been placed. That wraps up the setup instructions for Adventure 1, Battle at the Black Lake. And that, my friends, is going to wrap up this setup video for Role Player Adventures, Adventure 1, Battle at Black Lake. I I really hope that this video gives you a great idea as to how to get the game to the table and what's involved in that process. I also really hope that for those of you that are interested or intrigued by this game, that the showcase with the unboxing, this setup video, and gameplay to come will help you to make an informed decision as to whether Role Player Adventures is for you. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, keep on rolling solo.